you know that uh, that there is a Miranda law when it comes into places uh, when they're reading it to you, Mirandizing you. They let you know that you have the right to an attorney. Anything you say in can, can and will be used against you, and that you have a right to an attorney. And if you do not have one, one can be appointed. So in the case of Christ, there are times where we enter into the courtroom and don't even know it. Sometimes that uh, the Jesus appears on our behalf because when the angels presented themselves before God, the devil presented himself also, and there was an accuser of the brethren whose name was Satan. And so when he goes up to heaven and brings your name up in the courtroom before God. Jesus, who is your court appointed, he is your uh, your Christian appointed attorney when you're saved, he can go up on your behalf and he can plead your case and the blood has been pleaded over your body and your life and Jesus himself pleads on behalf of those who are saved and those who are righteous because there will be times where you'll be false accused and he can come in and the angels are looking because God, you need to know as a Christian that God sits high and his angels uh, look low so they are recording for you and so when you get in the courtroom the evidence can show that your hands are clean and that your reputation is pure and that the devil is just busy and, 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 and Jesus can bring that out before the Lord because as, as we already know we don't have access to God directly anyway as a Gentile we only go by way of his son through Jesus the Christ and so we need to understand that when we have sowed wild oats and those consequences become uh, evident in our life there are some consequences that you know it's uh, God has the right in the final say he is the judge and so in the, at the end of the day uh, grace and mercy are sufficient as we told in Psalms you know that goodness and mercy goodness is just grace grace is uh, not getting what you getting something you don't deserve, whereas mercy is not getting what you do deserve. And so because you know that the Lord is your shepherd and you know that you shall not want and you know that he leadeth you beside still waters and he restores your soul for his namesake. Then at the end of that uh, psalm, it lets us know that goodness, grace and mercy will follow you when you're saved. And because grace is sufficient. There are times where favor and God comes in and the judge looks at your situation and says, you know what? You should be dead by now. You should have been taken out when you did that. But because of Jesus pleading your case, because of the Christian uh, appointed attorney, that 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 our uh, Christian service advocate, he, he looks at your service. He looks at your dedication. He looks at your reconciliation and your repentance. And he says, you know what? We're going to go ahead and do time served on this one. So if you decide to sow while oats know that those seeds you're sowing are going to bring a consequence they're going to bring a reward you cannot live and work uh i always tell people that if you work for the devil hell is your pay and you cannot run with G walk with Jesus and walk with God if you're running with the devil. So you have to make up your mind and choose you today, this day, who you're going to serve, whether it's going to be God or Maimon. And this is the crux of the Resurrection Sunday. And so it would be no better time than today to give God your heart and give Jesus your hand and go ahead and make your life straight. Turn right and go straight. Yes, you're going to see some roads. You're going to see some exits, some sidebars. People are going to tell you there's a better route, even your GPS, your gut, your instinct your brain may tell you you can turn right here and make a quicker trick a trip and, and make a, a better trek but guess what there's only one way and that's to follow route 66 stay on the highway of christ don't allow anyone to let you deviate too far to the left nor the right think about what you're going to do in eternity are you going up or are you going to go down and you're making that because the word says that we are after death is judgment it also reminds us that we have to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling to God, not man. Man can't put you in heaven or hell. They can mess with your body. They can mess with your money, your life. They can touch everything in there but your life because that's what he told the devil in heaven. He said, you can touch everything, save his life. And he said, well, if you can do that and give me all this in his hand and all this in his power, then uh, he'll curse you surely and die. Not this one, not Nate, not Pastor Bassett, not Apostle, not Prophet, not Bishop, whatever title you want to give me. Uh, for God, I live. For God, I die. I have this decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I may stumble. I may trip. But guess what? On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hang on to Jesus with everything you got. If you don't got, if you don't have him, go get him. Go find him. Locate him. Pray to him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And if you have had him and have made a wrong turn, you took the wrong exit, you should have waited a couple of miles, but you got excited, anxious, and overzealous and moved off the road too fast, I incline you to go back to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Humble thy Myself. Pray, seek thy face, turn from his ways. Then will you hear from heaven. Then will he heal your land. You just got to turn around 
Make a U-turn. Not an illegal U-turn. You can go all the way down to the next available exit. You might be a few miles off, but better late than never. Because in the kingdom of God, reaping and sowing is automatic. God is not mocked whatsoever. Man so of that shall he also reap. And remember, consequences, good choices, good consequences. Bad co choices, bad consequences. Logical, con logical consequences. I teach it all the time in my exceptional and special education to my children. And even though they have special needs, most every child I teach that to, no matter how, how brilliant... Or no matter how uh, how dependent on special needs to us accumulate that brilliance, they all understand those two words, logical consequences. There is a consequence for what you're doing. And if you want to make sure that it's good, then you need to do good. Don't sow hell into people's lives and get mad when you come back with a whole lot of wickedness and confusion and trifling behavior. When you sow love, you reap love. When you sow hate, you reap hate. When you sow uh, conniving, scheming, willing, dealing, that's what's going to come back back your seeds are going to yield a harvest what are you going to bring in when the harvest when the sheaves are being brought in are you going to be rejoicing or are you going to be repenting that's all i want you to know today stay with jesus sow those seeds of righteousness leave the wild oats alone uh, and i will be getting back with you when we get back into the city when we will head north and get back into our normal location and we can get back to our regular time of giving you the word that god has placed on my heart but just know this is a time to rejoice. Resurrection Sunday is here. He came living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Risen, he justified me, freed me forever. He's coming back one glorious day. If no one else has told you, God loves you. So do I.